In question number 1, we are interested to find the unit surface normal to a given surface. So, find the unit surface normal to x squared y plus 2 x z is equal to 4 at a given point 2 minus 2 3. This is a question. Surface normal is given by the gradient vector. So, first what we do is we will find gradient of phi. This is nothing but del phi. This is nothing but dou phi by dou x into i plus dou phi by dou y into j plus dou phi by dou z into k. So, this is the given scalar potential or the surface. So, let us differentiate this partially with respect to x. You get 2 x y plus 2 z times i dou phi by dou y is only x squared j dou phi by dou z is 2 x k. Now, this is uh, the general surface normal vector at any point when I say general at any point. So, if you substitute 2 minus 2 3 let us see what is the position del phi is equal to minus 8 plus 6 that is minus 2 i x squared becomes 4 j and then 2 x k that is nothing but 4 k. Let us find the magnitude of this. This is nothing but square root of 4 plus 16 plus 16. This is square root of 36 which is 6. Now, we only need to convert this into a unit vector. So, what you do is n cap is equal to del phi divided by the magnitude of del phi. So, when you divide this with 6 you get minus i plus 2 j plus 2 k divided by 3. But what is uh, not clear in this problem is whether the surface normal is an inward surface normal or outward surface normal. So, for the outward surface normal we use a positive sign convention for the inward we put a minus because it is not specified we use a plus or minus symbol and therefore, you can find the correct option for this problem is A. Question number 2 we have to find the directional derivative of the scalar potential phi is equal to x y square plus y z cube at the point 2 minus 1 1 on it along the direction of the vector i plus 2 j plus 2 k. I hope you are all aware of this concept. We have a scalar potential phi. Scalar potential can be visualized as a geometrical surface. and uh, there is a point here p in this case p is 2 minus 1 1. This is a given vector we will call it a the vector is i plus 2 j plus 2 k. This is the gradient vector at that point. So, gradient vector is the surface normal. So, now you take the orthogonal projection of the surface normal and this is the directional derivative. 
So, we we'll have to find the length of this projection. So, directional derivative of phi along A is del phi dot A cap, where A cap is a unit vector corresponding to this vector. So, let us calculate del phi. Del phi is i dou phi by dou x plus j dou phi by dou y plus k dou phi by dou z. So, dou phi by dou x is y square i plus dou phi by dou y will be 2 x y plus z cube j dou phi by dou z is 3 y z squared k. So, now introduce this point into this. So, at 2 minus 1 1 del phi is equal to i 2 x y is minus 2 plus 1 is minus j 3 y z squared. So, this will be minus 3 k right. At the same time let us also calculate the magnitude of A which is square root of 1 plus 4 plus 4 which is 3. So, A cap is equal to i plus 2 j plus 2 k divided by 3. So, now we have del phi we got A cap let us take the dot product that gives the directional derivative is equal to 1 minus 2 minus 6 divided by 3. So, let us go back into the calculation and check once again y square i where y is minus 1. So, that is i 2 x y 2 x y will be 2 into 2 into minus 1 that is minus 4 plus 1. So, that is minus 3. So, that is a small correction and then 3 y z squared 3 y z squared 3 into 1 into minus 1 that is minus 3. So, here we will have to make a small correction in the dot product. So, i dot i is 1 minus 3 into 2 is minus 6 and then minus 3 into 2 is minus 6. So, you get minus 11 by 3 that corresponds to option D. So, it is a very fundamental concept based on projections. Question number 3 to find the angle between the surface normals to the surface x y is equal to z square at the points 4 1 2 and 3 3 minus 3. So, we are given a surface x y minus z square. Let us say we are given point P as 4 1 2 and point Q as 3 3 minus 3. First get the gradient del f. So, this will be y i plus x j minus 2 z k. Now, calculate the gradient at these two points. So, del f at p y i is i x j is 4 j minus 4 k. Immediately you calculate the modulus. This will be square root of 1 plus 16 plus 16 which is square root of 33. Similarly, let us find out del f at q. So, y i is 3 i plus 3 j plus 6 k. Again you compute at q and you will get square root of 9 plus 9 plus 36. So, that is 18 plus 36 
square root of 54. Now, theta is equal to cos inverse of let us say a dot b by magnitude a into magnitude b, where we can call this as a and this as b. So, let us take the dot product, this will be 3 plus 12 minus 24 divided by square root of 33 into square root of 54. For acute angles, we can take a mod here, we can take a mod here. So, we can get cos inverse, this is 15 minus 24 minus 9, so we will make it 9 by this we can write as square root of 3 into 11 into square root of 9 into 3 into 2. So, that will make it square root of, uh, so this all we get cancelled and you will get cos inverse 1 by square root of 22. So, this is the angle between the two surfaces and the correct option for this problem is B. So, this is a straightforward application. Again, uh, as I told you, there can be uh, different ways in which the questions can be given, but th at the bottom is basically this formula of angle between two vectors. So, let us go to the next question. Question number 4, if del f is equal to 2 x y z cube i plus x square z cube j plus 3 x square y z square k, what is f of x y z if f of 1 minus 2 2 is equal to 4. So, this is a, a reverse problem where del f is declared 2 x y z cube i plus x squared z cube j plus 3 x squared y z squared k. We are also given f of 1 minus 2 2 is equal to 4 and the question is to find the scalar potential. Now, how do we do this? this is the dou f by dou x part. This is the dou f by dou y part. And this is the dou f by dou z part. So, you can get f as the partial integration of 2 x y z cube with respect to x. So, when you integrate this, you get x squared y z cube plus a constant. What is this constant? It can be a function of y and z. That is because the integration with respect to x is partial, y and z can be constants. Let us call this f 1 f 2 is a partial integration of x square z cube with respect to y. So, you get x square y z cube plus another function of x and z. f 3 is equal to the partial integration of 3 x square y z square dou z and you will get 3 x square y z cube by 3 or x square y z cube plus a function of x and y. So, the function that we want can be written as f 1 union f 2 union f 3 that is it is an amalgamation of all these things and you will find the common term x square y z cube 
plus maybe a numerical constant c. So, it is all settled now. We will call this f as f of x, y, z, but we are given this valuable input f of 1 minus 2, 2. So, f of 1 minus 2, 2 is equal to 4 implies with x is equal to 1, y is equal to minus 2, z is equal to 2, you get 1 into minus 2 that is minus 2 into 8. So, you get minus 16 plus c, but that is equal to 4 implies c is equal to 20. So, if you feed this c here, you will get f of x y z is equal to x squared y z cube plus 20. So, you can see that the correct option is c. So, this is a uh, one of the problems where the gradient field is declared, declared and the scalar potential has to be constructed. So, this is where partial integration comes into play. Question number 5. What is the output of del dot r cube into r bar? We define r bar is equal to x y x i plus y j plus z k and this is a called the position vector of any point on a space curve. Small r means the magnitude of this vector. So, that is nothing but square root of x square plus y square plus z square. Do r by do x will be 2 x by twice square root of x square plus y square plus z square which is nothing but x by r. Similarly, dou r by dou y will be y by r, dou r by dou z will be z by r. All this may be remembered directly. Now, let us come to this issue. Now, look at this. This is del dot. So, this is a problem based on divergence. So, the divergence of a field is nothing but dou f 1 by dou x plus dou f 2 by dou y plus dou f 3 by dou z. So, let us uh, look into the first component. This is nothing but dou by dou x of x r cube. Similarly, plus dou by dou y of y r cube plus dou by dou z of z r cube. Now, this is x r cube because we have to pick up the f 1 component that is pick up the i component from here multiplied by r cube multiplied by r cube. So, that is how you get x r cube. So, let us write summation dou by dou x of x r cube on the three symbols x, y, z. So, this is nothing but summation apply the uv rule you will get r cube plus x into 3 r square dou r by dou x. But remember dou r by dou x is x by r. So, therefore, this becomes summation r cube plus 3 x r square into x by r. So, this is reduced to summation r cube plus 3 r x squared. So, if you expand the summation, you will get 3 r cube plus 3 r into x square plus y square plus z square. But observe x square plus y square plus z square under root is equal to r. Therefore, the square of that will be equal to r square. So, 3 r cube 
plus 3r into r square makes it 6r cube and the correct option for this problem is D. So, this is a very simple problem, but why this was selected is to know about the position vector related problems and many such problems can be solved in uh, the context of gradient divergence and curl. Let us go to the next question. Question number 6, what are the values of the scalars a, b and c for which the field f bar is equal to x plus 2 y plus a z into i plus b x minus 3 y minus z into j plus 4 x plus c y plus 2 z into k is irrotational. So, according to this, since f is irrotational, curl f is equal to 0. So, i, j, k, dou by dou x, dou by dou y, dou by dou z and then let us feed the components of the vector x plus 2 y plus a z b x minus 3 y minus z 4 x plus c y plus 2 z. So, let us expand this and set it equal to 0 i into the partial derivative of this with respect to y will give us c minus the partial derivative of this with respect to z you get minus 1. So, minus of minus is 1 minus j into partial derivative of this with respect to x you get 4 this with respect to z you get minus a plus k times this with respect to x you get b minus 2. Now, by 0 bar we mean 0 i plus 0 j plus 0 k. So, when you set up you will get c plus 1 is equal to 0 that is c is minus 1 a minus 4 is equal to 0. So, a is 4 and b minus 2 is equal to 0, you get b is equal to 2. So, the values of a, b, c are 4, 2, minus 1 and the correct option is d. So, this is a very fundamental problem on calculating the curl of a vector. Let us go to the next question. Question number 7, what is the scalar potential corresponding to the irrotational field f is equal to 6 y plus z cube i plus 3 x square minus z into j plus 3 x z square minus y into k. Well, this field is given to be a rotational, therefore, you are given curl f is equal to 0, which automatically takes you to this very important result del f is equal to del phi is equal to f. So, it is a scalar potential phi that we have to determine. So, dou phi by dou x is equal to the first component of the field that is 6 x y plus z cube dou phi by dou y is equal to the second component which is 3 x squared minus z and the third component is equal to f 3 which is 3 x z squared minus y. Such a problem was already solved earlier. So, phi 1 we will call it is the partial integration of f 1 with respect to x and you will get 3 x square y plus x z cube 
plus a function of y and z because y and z are constants of integration. Phi 2 is the integral of f 2 with respect to y partially and you will get 3 x square y minus y z plus some function of x and z phi 3 is integral f 3 with respect to z partially and you will get x z cube minus y z plus a function of x y. So, if you want the scalar potential phi you take the union of all these three. So, union as all of you are aware is to consider everything, but not repeat anything. So, 3 x square y is seen in two places. So, you take it once x z cube is seen here and here. So, you take it once minus y z is seen two times you take it once. With this we have covered all the fundamental terms. Now, it comes to accounting for f 1 of y z, f 2 of x z and f 3 of x y. f 1 of y z should be considered as minus y z, f 2 of x z should be considered as the x z cube term and f 3 of x y should be considered as the 3 x square y term. In addition to this a numerical constant c may also be existing. So, this will be the required scalar potential and the correct option is a. Let us go to the next question. Question number 8. If del square f of r is equal to 0, then what is f of r? Del square as all of you know is called the Laplacian operator. So, we have del square f of r is equal to d square f by d r square plus 2 by r f of r. This is a well known uh, result and this is given equal to in fact 2 by r f dash r or d f by d r. I think I will make it d f by d r. So, let us uh, remember this as f double dash r plus 2 by r f dash r. So, we make a substitution let f dash r is equal to some u. This implies f double dash r is equal to u dash or d u by d r. So, when you use that here, so this becomes d u by d r plus 2 by r u is equal to 0. So, this is now a separable equation. So, we can write this as d u by u is equal to minus 2 by r d r. So, when you integrate this, you will get log u is equal to minus 2 log r plus log c. So, that means we can say u is equal to c by r square, but u is equal to f dash r. So, you can write this as f dash r is equal to c by r square. This is nothing but d f by d r is equal to c by r square. So, d f is equal to c by r square d r. So, if you integrate this, 
you will get f is equal to minus c by r plus some d. So, we can say the general form is f is equal to a plus b by r, where we can choose d as a and minus c as b. So, this is the required function where which satisfies the Laplace's equation. So, the correct option for this problem is d. So, this is a problem which has been selected because you must know the definition of the Laplacian operator and you must know little bit of differential equations to overcome the problem. Let us go to the next question. Question number 9. What is the output of del square log r? Let me show you the uh, classical way of doing this. This is nothing but dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square operated on log r. This we can write in brief as dou square by dou x square of log r in three symbols x, y, z. So, let us do one by one dou by dou x of differentiate once you will get 1 by r dou r by dou x. So, this is summation dou by dou x this is x by r. So, you will get x by r square. So, this is nothing but summation r square into 1 minus x into 2r dou r by dou x divided by r power 4. So, this is summation r square minus again this is x by r. So, you will get 2 x r into x by r divided by r power 4. So, this becomes summation r square minus 2 x square by r power 4. Now, if you look at this, you will get, if you open the summation, you will have 3 r square minus 2 into x square plus y square plus z square by r power 4, but we know this is r square. So, 3 r square minus 2 r square by r power 4. So, you get 1 by r square as the option which is the option b. So, you could have done it by other alternative methods, but a student who practices through uh, classical methods can also do it within short time but one has to have very good grip on the derivatives of r and the definition of the Laplacian and all that. So, let us go to the next question. Question number 10, for the scalar potential f is equal to x to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 4 plus x square plus y square plus 11, what is the output of curl of grad f at the point 1 1 1? This is a problem which is based on very simple common sense. There is a trap laid for the student here. Actually, curl of grad f doing it the long way would consume a lot of time. There is a very important statement which says gradient fields are irrotational
what this simply means is if f is a scalar potential del f generates a gradient field and what this statement says is gradient fields are irrotational that means curl of grad f will be zero now let us look at the problem you are given a gradient field and you are supposed to find the curl of the gradient field so just remember this statement all gradient fields are rotational therefore the curl of any gradient field will always be zero so all this is a trap laid for the student don't have to do any differentiation no gradient calculations no curl calculations this point is again misleading so therefore if you just remember this you will know the answer is zero with uh, any without any calculus operations so with this we come to a small uh, lecture on vector differentiation we will continue with vector integration